Nobody's going to be able to stop the wrath of God's hands, boy. I'm going to put these n****s on you. I, I promise you that. You're going to get these gloves. I'm going to smack fire in your When we did the showcase at Arista for, for Clive, next came across more polished to Clive than Jaheem. And Jaheem got turned down by Clive. And that's why next came out before Jaheem. R&B singer Jaheem has been arrested for starving 15 dogs. When our favorite singers and performers suddenly vanish into thin air without a single word, you can't help but wonder what would make someone turn their back on fame and all the perks that come with it. If you were an R&B fan from the mid-1990s to about the mid-2000s, then the name Jaheem probably rings a bell. Jaheem was one of the best R&B vocalists of his era, right up there with the likes of Maxwell or Joe. But Jaheem sort of pulled a disappearing act, and since his disappearance from the music scene happened gradually, fans weren't that alarmed initially. But fast forward to September 2021 and news breaks that Jaheem got himself into hot water, facing charges of animal cruelty for reportedly starving 15 dogs. But is this the main reason Jaheem decided to step away from the music spotlight? Or did something happen to him before he left the industry that triggered his reported breakdown? Let's get into it. I don't do what I do to please you. I do it for me. I feel good about it. I like it. It's me. Not for you, all right? Worry about what your mother got under her head. Worry about what your girl got under her head. So first, let's take a stroll down memory lane and dive into the musical journey of Jaheem H. Hoagland, the R&B sensation who swept the music scene of the late 90s and early 2000s with his smooth as butter voice and timeless classics like Just In Case and Put That Woman First. Jaheem's career kicked off after he caught the attention of Naughty By Nature's KG, who signed him to Divine Mill Records in 2000, setting the stage for the release of his debut album, Ghetto Love in 2001. Now let's talk hits. Jaheem's second album, Still Ghetto, in 2002 unleashed multiple chart toppers like Put That Woman First and Fabulous, both earning the coveted platinum status. Hi, I'm Andrew. What's your name? Jaheem. Jaheem. Tell me about your nomination. You've got several nominations, don't you? i got several nominations. Best R&B performer, uh, single, uh, Find My Way Back, and the third one is uh, Best Out. Best album. Not Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Fast forward to February 2006, and Jaheem's third album, Ghetto Classics, drops like a bomb, landing the number one spot on the U.S. Billboard 200 and selling a whopping 153,000 copies in its first week. Jaheem went on to collaborate with heavyweights like RL from Next, Blackstreet, Darren, and Cliff Lighty, solidifying his place in the R&B scene. The hits keep coming with Ghetto Classics in 2006, marking Jaheem's first number one album. The following year, he signed with Atlantic Records and dropped his fourth album, The Makings of a Man. Jaheem was on a roll, churning out hits like Nobody's Business, and late 2009 saw the release of the single, Ain't Leaving Without You, paving the way for the 2010 album, Another Round. But after this album, Jaheem's career started to slow down, and he took an almost three-year hiatus from music. He made a comeback in 2013 with the single, Age Ain't a Factor, and later that same year, he released his sixth album, Appreciation Day. Meanwhile, Jaheem tried to get his his own label off the ground called Julie's Dream Music Group, originally launched in 1997. But that didn't really work out, and in February 2015, Jaheem signed a new record deal with BMG Records, saying goodbye to Atlantic. In 2016, Jaheem released his seventh album, and so far, final album titled Struggle Love. The album was received well by music critics and debuted at number 24 on the Billboard 200 chart. But a few years down the road, fans became alarmed when photos and and videos emerged of Jaheem looking gaunt, unkempt, and much older than his age, leading to speculation that he was using substances. But Jaheem denied the addiction rumors and claimed that his changed appearance was due to adopting a vegan diet. But fast forward to 2021, and Jaheem again sparked concern for his mental well-being when he was arrested and charged with animal cruelty by New Jersey police. Police discovered 15 dogs in varying stages of emaciation at his home 
Sadly, one dog had to be euthanized and the other 14 were released to a local kennel. And as you can imagine, fans didn't have a lot of sympathy for Jaheim because there's simply no excuse for doing this to innocent animals. But some folks argued that Jaheim was mentally ill and speculated that he went through some traumatic experiences in the music industry. One fan said he went through something very sinister in the industry when he was in it. Maybe he had a breakdown and just wants to be heard. Who knows? Shouldn't talk bad or tease him. And another one added, people really be going through it. All these traumatic life events he wasn't truly healed from. This is so sad. He is such a talented artist and he is still on my playlist. There were also rumors about Jaheim suffering a mental breakdown sometime around 2006. And to make matters worse, he really didn't have any support system behind him. Jaheim's dad passed away when he was two, his mom passed when he was 16, and shortly after, he lost his grandmother to cancer. So basically, he's been on his own since the age of 16 and forced to navigate the shady music business without any genuine support. What's also believed to have hampered Jaheim's potential musical comeback was his decision to publicly support Donald Trump for president. Back in 2020, Jaheim posted a video on Instagram claiming that Trump saved a lot of people and that the Americans have turned their backs on this great man. Oh boy. About this Trump. Trump has saved a lot of people, man. Face it, it is what it is. I don't give a damn who don't like it. Do your homework, because I'm going to post some more stuff. I'm going to wake y'all up. And um, yeah, if it wasn't for Trump taking the stance that he's take, taken, you guys would have been done. Finished. Finito. Yes. Jaheim received a lot of backlash over his support for Trump, with a lot of people saying that this was yet more proof that Jaheim was struggling with mental health. But there's another side to this story because rumors had been flying around for years that Jaheim was on the DL and that he was potentially taken advantage of by some of the industry higher-ups. In fact, back in 2003, Jaheim completely lost it during a radio interview when they asked him about these rumors. I found this one article that read, the DJ Sway team at New York's WQ HT Hot 97 are probably still picking up equipment and scratching their heads, wondering what the hazy? Jaheim, who appeared on the radio show Tuesday, became infuriated when he was asked by Jimmy Marr if he was, quote, a homosexual, end quote, during the interview. He responded by asking Marr the same question, and then he really went off. According to the Sway team, Jaheim and his posse verbally attacked Marr and busted up the studio, breaking microphones and equipment. Um, this is the definition of doing too much. And of course, it fueled the speculations even more, with some fans claiming that Jaheim's reaction was probably due to some trauma he experienced in the industry. Some people were even speculating that Clive Davis, the CEO of Arista Records and Diddy's mentor, made some unwanted advances on Jaheim. And when he turned them down, Clive allegedly refused to sign him, choosing to prop up R&B group Next instead. And then later on, rumors popped up that Clive tried to do the same mess with Next, and when they they turned him down, he dropped them from his label. One fan said, why you think Next not on J Records no more? Cause they turned down Clive Davis's well, advances and he tried to blackball the group but promised to keep RL as a solo artist because Clive felt he was the voice. RL said no, it's all of us or none of us. So after he dropped Next as a group, RL wanted out as a solo artist because he's a part of Next. To be clear, neither Next nor Jaheim ever accused Clive of any wrongdoing. But a lot of people to this day remain convinced that Jaheim went through some trauma in the music industry that completely broke him. And when you take into account how young he was when he started his career with no family to support him, it's not much of a stretch to believe he became easy prey for industry monsters. One fan said he didn't take the deal they were offering him, if you get what I mean. The end. And another person wrote, the man simply chose not to go to Diddy's parties and get involved in their industry shenanigans and they blackballed him for it. But what's your take on Jaheim's disappearance from the music industry? Do you think something traumatic happened to him that made him turn his back on the industry? Let me know in the comments and make sure to check out this next video.